Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Fryman, the Chief of Hepatobiliary and Pancreatic Surgery at St. Joseph Medical Center. Today's medical tutorial is on the Whipple procedure for pancreatic cancer as well as other types of pancreatic cancer surgery. The pancreas is an organ that we've drawn in previous tutorials that looks like this. Uh, it is divided into the head, the neck, the body, and the tail. The Whipple procedure is an operation that involves resection of the head of the pancreas and associated structures. Resections that involve the neck, body, and tail are called distal pancreatectomy, splenectomy, or near total pancreatectomy involve uh, resection of uh, tumors or malignancies uh, in this region here. We're, fo we're first going to focus on the Whipple procedure and I will draw this in the pancreas again and this is the uh, head and just to review the anatomy uh, under the neck here is the superior mesenteric vein, uh, which we call the SMV. Just to the side of it is the superior mesenteric artery, which comes off the aorta, which we call the SMA. The, the splenic vein tends to run under the pancreas, joins with the superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein which goes to the liver. The arterial anatomy, the celiac artery, comes off the aorta, gives off the splenic artery as a branch, the left gastric, and then the hepatic uh, artery, which also goes to the liver. So the blood supply to the liver is the portal vein and the hepatic artery liver is up in this area here. The Whipple procedure generally involves a resection that begins directly over the portal vein, that's superior mesenteric vein confluence in this area here. So I'm going to redraw this. superior mesenteric vein, portal vein, and the artery running like this. And then the head. And then what I didn't draw before, uh, the duodenum or the first portion of the small intestine is attached to the pancreatic head. And then the pancreatic duct uh, drains into the duodenum and then the common bile duct also joins so the first part of the Whipple procedure is determining operability uh, and this basically entails determining if the cancer wherever it may be in the head is is free easily free of the of the blood vessels um, the first part, we that the first uh, step is to make sure that there is no clear metastatic disease or spread to the liver or the peritoneal surfaces. Um, if that's okay, um, the next part is is called the portal dissection, where these these um, structures, including the hepatic artery, uh, are dissected out and determined to be free. The uh, common hepatic, common bile duct is, is uh, dissected uh, and encircled. The portal vein is dissected and this portion of the pancreas or the pancreatic neck is freed from the portal vein, portal vein. Um, this is the superior mesenteric vein which we spoke about earlier. Once uh, we determine 
or complete the portal dissection and determine the north part of our dissection, we go into the south side. Uh, we enter what's called the lesser sac, uh, or the potential space that's uh, between the uh, stomach and colon, in order to grant us access to the superior mesenteric vein. If we're doing pyloric preservation, the epiploic vessels are followed into, into the superior mesenteric vein as a, uh, as a guide and also uh, in order to preserve as much of the, them as possible. This portion of the pancreas is dissected and it is then determined whether the anterior surface of these vessels are free Uh, in order to lift the pancreas off of the uh, the vessels. Uh, once this is determined uh, to be free, um, the operation can then uh, be, be go, uh, begin. The stomach is, this is the pyloric area, the stomach is transected. Um, the small intestine is transected at this portion after taking down what we call the ligament of trites. Um, so this is the, 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 the last portion of the duodenum. This is the, the proximal jejunum. The transection of the bowel occurs here, and then it occurs at this point if we're doing pyloric preservation, which is just distal to the pyloric channel. The bowel is, is swung um, under the mesenteric vessels. This is, what, this is a portion of the head called the uncinate process, or we'll call it UP, um, and this is extremely important. This is uh, part of the dissection is extremely important. This is the neck. Uh, this wasn't really drawn to scale previously. The mesenteric vein and artery are, are close. Um, the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery, which supplies uh, blood supply to the uncinate process. And this is what we call the retroperitoneal margin. Sometimes the uncinate may actually come even closer, like this. Uh, we make uh, an attempt early on uh, to divide the pancreatic duodenal vessels and devascularize this, <coughs> in addition to clean up the superior mesenteric artery, what we call the retroperitoneal margin. Uh, this is done uh, first. Branches up from the superior mesenteric vein to the uncinate process are also cleared uh, and told both the vein and artery are completely uh, rolled back. Uh, this is the area, what we, what's called the retroperitoneal margin, where uh, there are frequently uh, positive margins or what we call an R1 resection. So we, we make an early attempt to clean uh, this part up and dissect this part. The, S we, uh, the superior mesenteric artery is clean enough to do an, uh, clean enough that a vascular surgeon could be would be able to do a um, a bypass and use it as a conduit and, and use it as a uh, recipient vessel, for example. Um, as well as the uh, portal vein, we do not cheat uh, and remove and leave the uncinate process behind. So once the once the uncinate process is is essentially devascularized, we're able to transect the neck of the pancreas, and this is this is called doing the artery uh, or uncinate process uncinate approach first, which we tend to do more frequently uh, within the past uh, year or two. The pancreatic neck is then able to be divided. Uh, in this location here. The uh, common duct is the, uh, or common bile duct is transected uh, and that basically finishes um, the removal or the transection of the, I'm sorry, or the uh, resection of the operation. At, at this point now the reconstruction has begun this is the pancreas, and this is the pancreatic duct. This is the common bile duct, common hepatic duct. And we can put in the uh, stomach over here with pylorus being preserved here. So the proximal jejunum 
just distal to the staple line is brought up to the intestine. And the sewing begins. We, tend, we favor a uh, duct to mucosa unless the pancreatic duct is less than two and a half or three millimeters. So a duct to mucosa, we use 6-OPDS suture. Generally do not put a stent in. Um, if the duct is smaller than two and a half or three millimeters, we'll do a two-layer invagination. Common hepatic duct, common bile duct is done in one layer with 5-OPDS. Um, a T-tube is, is placed uh, for smaller ducts. And then just downstream, which we tend to do in an anti-colic fashion, is the uh, duodenojejunostomy. This is the stomach. This is with pyloric preservation. The operation um, at St. Joseph Medical Center is done with uh, two attending surgeons, which cuts the operative time down significantly from uh, other centers. Uh, we tend to average somewhere between two and a half uh, to three hours uh, for uncomplicated uh, resection. Uh, length of stay on the average is somewhere in the uh, seven to nine days. Um, complications uh, pan are common, which are the pancreatic fistula, which uh, occurs in about 10 uh, percent of patients, and delayed gastric emptying. occurs in uh, 10 to 20 percent of uh, patients. I will have a separate video uh, discussing the complications from the Whipple surgery. Uh, I hope this uh, was helpful. Uh, please feel free to visit my website uh, for more information.